Hello again. <clears throat> We're going to be working on the speaker boxes some more. This is actually going to get some uh, some footage of the final assemblies, or at least as far as I was able to. Um, <clears throat> There's also a bit of a surprise as we were working on the speakers. We discovered that uh, there were people enjoying the Aurora Borealis. And when my daughter sent me a picture saying, Hey, look what I can see from my porch. It didn't dawn on me that, like, <laughs> that was right then. I was just so tired. Um... And I didn't think to go outside, because sadly, we actually did have a clear night. No clouds. Uh, we have some friends on the other side of the valley from us that actually got some amazing photos. But I was just too tired for that to register, apparently, so we ended up going to bed. <laughs> Our, my view of the Aurora Borealis was... The same view of my ceiling that I get every night. <laughs> we actually tried the next night, because we uh, read that the uh, solar electromagnetic activity was still supposed to be super high, but it wasn't apparently high enough for uh, either our naked eye or from the camera. Um, but we'll, we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, so what I'm working on right now is uh, <laughs> trying to get the socket off of my little socket holder. For some reason it seems to have like glued itself in place or something. It was kind of weird. It took me a little while to unjam that. Uh, but then I'm I, I use the uh, socket to hold the nut and uh, crank those down for the for the top hat and for the uh, I, did, I did something similar with the T-nuts for the um, speaker grill clips uh, and we, I'm trying to also vacuum as I, as I move them around to, to keep, uh, to get as much of the sawdust and, and, uh, construction debris off of them. Uh, however, we did have to do a, a final vacuuming, uh, in West Jordan, uh, which was definitely needed. <laughs> um. We had to pull the subs out to put the carpet on, and I ended up just stapling it to the inside of the uh, lip for now, for the you know just to to be able to get things ready uh, for the wedding. But um, while I was working on that carpet, Emily was kind enough to keep uh, or to to pull out the vacuum and and make sure she got the speakers looking nice and new. I bet they were probably vacuumed four or five times, uh, which, you know, might have been a little easier to handle in an actual shop, and I guess the next time I build a set, we'll find out. <laughs> but, so I'm just putting the top hats in at the moment. Um, this is actually bef footage from before I figured out that I needed to move them, so that was a little bit of a challenge. But then I'm also going to put the speaker grills into place. And these steps are kind of, they're, they're, they're some of those like the soldering steps where it, it just, you don't get any real progress to feeling like they're completed, um, but they do contribute to that final end end finished product and the better you can do these then the better 
everything goes. So, like I said, right now that's what I'm working on is the um, speaker grill clips. So I'll drill the holes where they need to be and then put the T-nut on the inside and, and actually just use the clip, it's the, the clamp itself um, to help ensure that I'm pulling that T-nut straight up into the into the wood. Uh, when we get the speakers over here I think you'll get a better vantage but um, I tried to make them as, as symmetrical and, and even as possible. The horn was a little bit awkward so the four inch woofer uh, didn't uh, didn't get that very perfect, I guess. Um, but you know, at an event, I'm the only person who's ever really going to notice that. Unless, of course, any one of you guys are at an event and happen to see them and go, "Oh yeah, you're right." <laughs> but anyway, so I, I flip the the grill. Uh, upside down and then uh, that locks the bolt from being able to go into the face of the wood and it just forces that T-nut to come up uh, and pulls the prongs into the wood and secures it quite well. So here, like I said, I'm just trying to position things and and then get the holes all drilled. clean as you go kind of a thing and then put those T nuts in the bottom a little four inch box was was definitely a little more awkward than I'm used to but then I can just tighten those down until they're locked in place and then pull them all out and since I'm using the flat side of the grill clamp against the face of the speaker, there's no no damage to the wood, and it also, uh, if it mars the clamp a little bit, which sometimes the bolts do, then that damage is on the under underside, which faces the speaker, so nobody will ever know. Works out pretty well. I used to try when I first started building and we tried all kinds of different things to um, try and put those T-nuts in place, uh, we, including even using a hammer. Uh, we would make the cuts, drill the holes, and then try and put them in before we actually assembled the boxes. And that worked okay, uh, but if you ever hit the hammer slightly off-center, then it would put the T-nut in at an angle and you'd have to pop it out and put a new one in, which was always a pain. So this method is by far the fastest and easiest. So that's just the way that it'll work until I figure something else out, I guess. <laughs> so now I've got all of those ready for the full range, and it's time to do the subs. These ones were a little bit more, well not a little bit, it was a lot more difficult to try and figure out because the face edges are all so far away. It ended up uh, largely being more just eyeballing it. And now that there's not the carpet you can kind of see there what I was talking about, how the it's a little L-shaped clamp uh, th that uh, the long side of the L will push down on the speaker grill, and then the short side of the L uh, creates a standoff. So by flipping that over, it just creates a flat spot. And I decided that I wanted to be able to test everything, so I'm actually going to just go ahead and complete the 15s right now because uh, 
At this point we kind of figured out that I might not get the carpet in time, but I wanted to still just have everything wired and and I like to use uh, colored electrical tape for marking cables and things. So all of the wiring in the in the back of the system is all color coded. So and and they are like bundled together. So there's one bundle that has the power and um, input signals for the crossover, and there's another bundle that has the power and uh, input signals for the amplifiers. And so and, and each one has their own color. It makes it really easy to to just quickly see um, what's going on. And if if I've got somebody helping, I can just say, hey, here, you know plug these into the green spots here and here and plug these into the red and white spots here and here and it uh, simplifies and, and makes things much easier. So I'm just adding the wiring for the for the sub. And this is the this is the old soldering iron that I was mentioning in the in the previous video. Uh, I was really struggling to get things hot enough. I ended up deciding I'm, I was a little worried about dripping on the on the uh, paper cones. And I wondered if there wasn't enough flux in the core. Like I wondered it. I know I, I was trying to see if maybe there was. I don't know anything I could think of that that would be a problem. I tried to eliminate. Um, I was I was about ready to go get a heater and start, you know, blowing a heater on on stuff. Uh, when I tested the stained glass soldering iron and and uh, figured out that it's actually that this little soldering iron is just not heating up enough anymore. You know, this is uh, kind of an odd thing, but something that I think is worth mentioning. Um, the speakers used to come wrapped in a expanded foam shell, I guess. So the, so what I, I believe what they would do is they'd put the speaker in the box and they had a bag and then they would inject expanding foam into that bag and it would just kind of expand up and around the speaker which would, you know, it made a nice uh, a nice secure shipping container and they would just put a piece of cardboard over the top to provide an extra layer in the you know in the box for the actual cone but uh, this cardboard wrap uh, I, I thought was actually a really nice touch to have so that uh, they're shipping more uh, ecologically minded than they used to which was pretty cool um, I'm sure that reduces their carbon footprint quite a bit because the the cardboard is easily recyclable or easily breaks down if you you know if you do send it to a landfill or like we use it in our garden to help block weeds um, put a nice thick layer of wood chips or compost over it things like that <clears throat> But uh, it was just a, a pleasant surprise to, to find that there was so little plastic used in their shipping. Um, as I've I discovered with a lot of this, there really is a lot of wasted material in the shipping of, of products. Um, it was really quite surprising. So there, you see, I'm trying again using some flux to see if I can get this to work better um, and it kind of worked uh, I'm just adding some more flux to see if I can get it to work better and 
and I didn't run the camera while I wandered around and looked, but you can see that now I've got that blue soldering iron. This is the stained glass soldering iron. And I, uh, like I said in the last video, it, it was, it blew my mind comparing between the two. This one heated up in like literally three seconds and was able to melt the solder um, to start tinning. And it just went so much easier. In fact, I ended up having to turn this one down quite noticeably. Um, so I think the other one, it might still work for some wood burning projects um, because it does have a variable heat on it and you just solder at the highest setting. Um, so I, I, I might still try, still keep it and try it. Um, Kernigan there you see she was, she wanted some loves but playing with molten metal and and super hot metal is not a good place for a kitty, so I didn't let her stay up there. So she decided to come and join me on the couch. You can, <laughs> you can see she just kept thinking, oh, I want to be up there where he's focusing his attention. <laughs> my original plan here was to solder the two wires together and then just take the shorter one and wrap it over and the little port that you have to plug these and screw them into wasn't big enough for the two wires so I ended up coming up with this idea for the uh, just for a Y and then taping everything And that worked much, uh, much better. I ended up, I did end up going over and, and redoing the other, um, the other speaker as well. All right, now we'll go put this together and. One last vacuuming for the inside just to make sure there's nothing loose in there. And this is one of the most nerve-wracking parts of building a speaker. Um, this is one of the reasons I actually prefer not to use screws and I prefer to use a bolt with a T-nut um, is, is because I have actually punctured a speaker before when I'm when I'm putting those screws in the screw gets a little off center and slips and then the the driver bit just goes right down through the paper or through the uh, through the rubber seal now this is about uh, pretty close to where the footage is going to end for today um, So, like I mentioned earlier, we uh, we we didn't get to see the Aurora Borealis, uh, but we were hopeful that we would. So, when we finished everything up, uh, we took a, a drive out uh, to see. I actually played with the uh, camera a little bit before we left, uh, just using my cell phone to kind of see if I could see anything. And there was one point where I did see a, a slight pinkish hue in the sky. I think that might have been just a light bleed over the hill from... Uh, I guess it would probably be coming from Yelm, technically. We don't have a perfectly dark sky where we're at, but we do get uh, pretty close. I looked at the dark sky map and we we're at like level 6 out of 15, and so... We ended up driving over to uh, Rife Lake and were able to take some pretty good night shots. Um, I had some fun taking taking pictures while Emily slept in the truck. Um, although she, she actually did hang out with me while we were taking pictures. Uh, this is Cassiopeia and it's just right there above the above the hills in the north 
north side of our sky, and as you can see, there is there is no uh, activity. Uh, but for those who don't know um, how to recognize Cassiopeia, it, it forms this kind of lopsided W, um, and we'll mark that uh, from star to star here. And there's just these these five stars that make a W. I personally don't really ever see what is considered to be the image. <laughs> um, <laughs> but so be it. It's still a constellation and it's still recognizable as if you know what you're looking for. Um, I actually I have a uh, an app on the phone that we use and it uh, allows you to uh, basically create an uh, augmented reality. Um, it's called Skyview, and it's a it's a it's a pretty awesome little app. There's a free version and there's a, a paid version, um, and it'll like as you're looking through the camera on your phone, it'll highlight things and it'll show you the image of what it's supposed to be. Um, and it, it'll show you like where the planets are and things like that. And so we, we drove around a little bit and tried to see if we could get a better view, tried to get some other pictures to see if we could eventually find the, uh, you know, the Aurora Borealis. Um, we never, never did find anything uh, other than just stars. Uh, but this was, as we were returning home, I happened to look out to the south and I saw this and using the Skyview app was able to see that this is the uh, head and claws of uh, Scorpius. And the same thing as before, I'll, I'll throw some lines up here to kind of highlight where the uh, stars actually are connecting to each other. So it actually goes down below where the camera could actually, well, we could actually see it's below the horizon for the tail. It was the first claw, and this is the second claw, I guess. Although there's a couple of different versions of Scorpius. Sometimes if you look, instead of having the um, first two lines, well, uh, here, we'll just modify this real quick for you. So these two outer lines that uh, designate the claws <coughs> in some versions come across to form like a T, um, I guess to show the edge of the shoulders of the scorpion, so to speak. Um, personally, it, it makes more sense looking at it the other way, um, but there's as far as I know, there's no right or wrong way. So it was it was pretty fun. We spent about three hours uh, driving around and photographing the different stars and whatnot, um, and then we came back and went to bed. So uh, that'll be it for today. As always, thank you for watching. God bless you and yours, and stay safe out there.